Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm here to tell you about a personal project that I built over the past few months, which is essentially uh, my own uh, smart glasses. Now, most of this talk will be based from the point of view from a software developer, because that's in general what I am. Uh, but what I also want to show you is that I was capable of uh, building this using simple hardware that's available right off the shelf. Um, well, first off, I just want to very, have a very quick uh, introduction as to what smart glasses are. Now, the most well-known ones are the uh, Google Glass. Uh, these are essentially just glasses which uh, essentially act as a small uh, display right here, which can uh, show you a heads-up display, which might give you something that looks a little bit like this. Uh, a very quick show of hands, uh, who here has ever tried uh, smart glasses, something like a Google Glass? Just a couple of hands, yeah, right. Um, uh, that for me, the first time when I got into uh, smart glasses was when I was working for a small startup company in Holland called uh, Gem Vision. Uh, they offer a solution where uh, remote workers are able to uh, showcase what they're seeing to people at the headquarters, and then from the headquarters they're capable of uh, communicating with, uh, with the remote worker and give them instructions on what to do. And something is crashing, of course, I'm sorry. Let me just very quickly see if I can get this to work again. Yeah, there we go. Um, so essentially, when you're wearing smart glasses, it looks a little bit uh, like this. Uh, you can just look around, and you have a small head-shop display here in the upper right or below. Uh, now, the first thing that you may think is that this is something that will get annoying really quick and that the uh, uh, display itself will be in the way all the time. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's just a little bit outside of your peripheral vision. So for me, it's very easy to just look past the screen, and then whenever I want to look up, any information, I just, in this case, have to look down uh, and get the information that I need. So what they were, were working on at Gem Vision is, uh, well, uh, oh dear, um, is uh, all right, I'm just going to try to do this as quickly as possible or just hop back and forth. Um, so at uh, Gem Vision, when people were, were wearing the glasses, their uh, camera was being streamed to an another web application using WebRTC. And so then via microphone, someone at the headquarters could give them instructions on what to do, or they could uh, draw in the feed itself. So for example, to give them instructions, like in this case, uh, look at this television over here. Uh, the smart glasses that they were using is, were called the Vuzix M300, uh, which uh, runs on Android. And uh, personally, I didn't do any work on the smart glasses themselves. I only work on the web application. But I really wanted to give this a try because, in my opinion, I think smart glasses are going to be a thing of the future. Not in this form, but once they get a little bit more like normal glasses, uh, people will want to use them. And because these glasses were working on Android, I was hoping that I could build something using uh, Cordova. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to. Uh, the smart glasses that they had over there were reserved for their clients, so they uh, really just didn't want me prototyping or playing around with them because in case they would break, well, that would basically mean that it would cost a lot of money for the company and for the startup. That's the last thing you would want. And I would admit, this kind of bummed me out a bit because I just really wanted to play around with this. But if I wanted to have my own smart glasses, I would have to pay at least 1,000 euros, which for me is just a little bit too much to pay for, um, well, for something that I just want to prototype with. Uh, but then last year, I suddenly started thinking. I was wondering, could I build something like this myself? So I essentially just decided, you know what, screw it. I am going to do it myself. And for this, I essentially needed three particular pieces of hardware. Now, the recipe that I have for it, the first one is, uh, you want a viewfind? Now, the viewfind is the heads-up display that I'm wearing here uh, right now. Uh, it's nothing, uh, what it essentially is, is nothing more than a second display. Uh, you can uh, hook it up to anything like a computer or a camera or a, or a mobile, and it will essentially act as a second display, either mirroring the output or if I connect it up to my laptop, it will uh, basically act as a second screen. Um, the, initial, the initial approach I wanted to take was um, to show, uh, to basically build some web applications and then stream it from my mobile to the glasses, but uh, the issue I had here was that it wasn't really ideal because uh, the, the screen would have to be on at all times and, um, and I also wouldn't be able to touch it if I would want to put it away. So I realized that, that I uh, needed another component and for that I wanted to step over 
to a Raspberry Pi. Now, I assume most people here have played around with a Raspberry Pi or heard of it. With your hands? Yeah, expect this much. Um, so yeah, Raspberry Pi is just a really uh, cheap computer uh, running on Raspbian, which is a sort of a Linux-like environment. And uh, at the moment, I just have it attached to my glasses right here uh, on my left. It's incredibly small, uh, uh, like almost the size of a credit card size these days. And they're just really powerful that they also have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, blah, blah, blah. And finally, to get the whole thing up and running, I needed nothing more than a simple power bank. Because the Raspberry Pi itself can run uh, via a, a mini USB uh, connector. And um, when you, um, and uh, it runs a very low power. So when I have it uh, hooked up to a power bank, it, I've, I've used it at very least for at least uh, an hour or so. And when you put all of those together, you essentially, I was able to get my own smart glasses running. But, uh, but then I ran into one particular big problem, and that is that the viewfind doesn't have any input. Uh, it's, it's cheap at the moment because uh, it doesn't add that much uh, functionality. Uh, so it doesn't have any input. Most other smart glasses, like the viewfind, have a touchpad or something that you can use to interact uh, with the apps, but the viewfind doesn't. So for that, I started building on a personal platform, which I have called Rubai. Now, what is Rubai? First off, I would say a bit of an artistic name for a project, but it's something I came up with in the middle of the night. Uh, but what it's actually meant to be is a platform for uh, wearables, for uh, glasses like these, in which the focus remains on prototyping because I really don't think that by myself I'll be able to build something uh, which is really ready for production. And given that I'm a web developer, it's also something that I really wanted to work entirely with web technology, just so like with HTML and JavaScript. Uh, the first part of the Rubai platform is just a display app, uh, which is running right here. Uh, it's nothing more than a simple single-page application uh, ru uh, written in Vue.js. Uh, it has a couple of apps written in it, uh, like, uh, like a camera and uh, Google Maps. Uh, when the Raspberry Pi boots, uh, it essentially just opens Chrome in kiosk mode and in uh, full screen mode. So that uh, all what I'll be able to see here is the uh, display, is to view the display app. And every app that I've built so far is essentially just a page in view.js. So if I want to open the camera app, it just goes to the camera page and uh, the, the view router uh, handles the rest. But then the next uh, uh, problem approach, which was essentially input. Like how should I be able to actually be able to communicate with the Raspberry Pi here and go to the camera page? Uh, or the Google Maps uh, page. And for that, I just came up, uh, I tried a couple of things. Uh, first, I just tried to do it via the GameCat API. Oh, did it fall down or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, Testing one, two, three. Yeah. All right, cool. I really haven't noticed. <laughs> uh, what I've written was, uh, what I've created is a simple remote web application which I can uh, open from my uh, mobile. Uh, which essentially just works as a remote control. Um, and what it basically just does is it uh, keeps sending messages back and forth via Socket.io, which is an easy library to send real-time messages back and forth. And honestly, the best way uh, to showcase just how this works, uh, I've prepared a little demo to show how the camera works. Uh, now, the viewfind also doesn't come with a camera itself, so what I've uh, done here is I've bought a USB endoscope, which is just a small camera, which is essentially meant to get to easy to hard, uh, hard to reach uh, places. And using nothing more than simple rubber bands, I've attached it to the viewfind itself. And then just to show how it works, um, here in the upper right, it's just the Rubik platform that you would normally have. And then here is the mobile app, and I can just press camera. And then it opens an application which, uh, uses the USB camera to get it, uh, which would normally be the endoscope, but it's now using the webcam from my uh, laptop. And when I press take photo here, it just sends a message to the display that, hey, I want to take a picture from, uh, I want to take uh, a picture. And then it just creates a base 64 string, which it sends back to the uh, mobile. And then I can just press save image as uh, to store it locally on my device. Uh, so other apps that I've built with it are, uh, the first one is for me actually the most important one, uh, which is just a simple browser. And in general, I use, uh, so I can just open any page here. Uh, most of the time I use this uh, to serve the presentation notes for my talks itself. 
Um, on a side note, this has also been sort of my uh, holy grail when it comes to these smart glasses because uh, I often give talks and I just want to be able to see my notes uh, and I want to have them projected right here. I'm using it at the moment and this is something that I've been playing around with for about two to three years now. And the first prototypes, well, they needed, <laughs> there is improvement now. Uh, some other apps uh, that I've written is uh, YouTube, so I can watch any type of YouTube video here, which is excellent when you're walking the dog. Uh, but also when I want to get from point A to point B, I built uh, Google Maps using the Google Maps API and the Image API to uh, display the map here. And this one may be a little bit freaky, but um, I'm personally, I'm really terrible with uh, faces and names. So using Face API, I'm actually able to do some sort of uh, facial recognition, so that whenever I look at someone and it's unable to actually recognize the, the person, then it gets uh, added to the uh, list here. And then I can just tap on them and, and then I can insert their name. So this way, the next time when I walk up to someone, I know that, oh, oh, it's Anton, or uh, hey, hey, it's Irene. So, and for me, that could be a great help. Uh, for the record, I haven't tried this in an actual environment yet. Um, what I've shown you so far mostly is um, something that I mostly just hacked together using uh, Angular and Vue. And personally, I just wasn't really happy with the whole concept because every time when I wanted to add a new app, I would have to add a page to the remote control, which was written in Angular, and then something in Vue. Uh, how they communicated back and forth was just a little bit of a mess. So I just I started to rewrite the whole thing. Um, in which the focus was to create something which would just be a low barrier approach to wearables. And with that, I mean just to offer a platform to developers which would give them an idea on how, on how they can just build simple apps uh, for uh, smart glasses. Uh, it's something that could technically might be ready for production, but I would say the biggest issue here is that the form factor would also need to be improved, and I have absolutely no experience with that. Uh, the biggest thing is, is that I want the whole project to be web-based and framework agnostic, essentially meaning that uh, I wanted developers to be able to build their very own apps using whatever tools they're, uh, they personally want to use, so that you essentially could build an app using either Vue or Angular, jQuery, or vanilla JavaScript, TypeScript, whatever you want. And, uh, how the re and I just wanted to streamline then how the remote would work via the mobile. And to demonstrate this, I'll, uh, I would like to walk you guys uh, through a simple example on how I can now build a Ruby app in the new platform. Uh, the example itself is just that I want to be able to sh uh, show a simple uh, to-do list here with the items that I still need to do. I want to be able to add new items or uh, remove them. Now to start building this uh, type of apps, uh, first uh, there's just an apps directory that has uh, all the different uh, apps that are available on the platform. Uh, and the name that you give to the directory uh, sort of used as an internal identifier. Uh, you have to add a configuration file uh, containing an ion icon and a name. Now an ion icon is just a reference to an ID in the ion icons library, which is sort of familiar to Font Awesome. Uh, this is mostly just a temporary solution, uh, and I really want to, uh, users, uh, developers just to be able to use their own uh, icons. Uh, and whatever name you give them is how they will show up on the uh, apps page. Uh, next, you want to uh, add just a simple index.html file, which is what will be served, uh, uh, which the display will show if the user clicks an app. So in this particular case, I've now just created a very simple page with a red background. And the next time when the user clicks on the to-do list, this is what they'll see right here. So the to-do app would have been opened at this point. Now next, what we want to do is actually add some functionality that we can so that we can actually communicate here via the uh, remote controls. And for that, I've written a simple uh, helper class in which you can just pass along a list of uh, input, uh, uh, form inputs, in which, uh, in this example, what I first just want to do is I want to give people the opportunity to add an item. So you can just give, uh, so I'm giving it two items, uh, a text input and a button. And so when this array is sent uh, from the display to the remote controls, then on the remote controls, you'll see something like this. Now, and here also for the button, I've also indicated that uh, if the user would click the button on their mobile, then on the display app, uh, this function will be called. Uh, so if the user has filled something in and they press add item, then the app here will get an event for that. And then you can just add the item itself to a list. Uh, so this uh, will ensure that the to-do items will appear right here on the view file. 
Now what you want to do next also is uh, to allow the user to be able to remove any to-do items after they finish them. Uh, and to and essentially it's practically doing the same thing as I did before with the add items. So um, if you, uh, uh, if, did it pop in? Sorry for that. Yeah, uh, um, and the, um, uh, so when there are any items in the to-do list, uh, then I'll just, uh, I'll add a divider uh, along with the title uh, saying remove items. And uh, then for each item that I have, uh, I'll add a button with the name of the text with the idea that if you press the button, it will then uh, remove it from the to-do list again. So in this particular example, I'm now sending the following information uh, to the display itself. So above first, again, the two items uh, which allow you to add something. But uh, after that, I also add a button for each list on the, uh, an item for, for, I will add a button from each item that is currently in the to-do list. And so then on the remote control, you will get something that looks uh, like this. So the user can easily just press a button to indicate that, hey, uh, I've done this particular task. And removing items is again nothing more than just updating the array and uh, sending a new uh, updated list to the remote control. And for me, the most thing that I'm happy about here is that this particular example I was able to put together in about 20 minutes. And that in the end has always been for me the main priority uh, for this project, that I just want to be able to create simple uh, tools uh, to try out my own things uh, with, uh, with smart glasses. Uh, and that's essentially in the end also what this whole entire project has been about. Um, uh, personally, it's uh, also just been a really fun way to just uh, step outside uh, my usual flow of HTML and JavaScript and just try out some new stuff. So that's one of the things that I'm just really happy about. And, it just, and what I'm just mostly amazed uh, about is um, that, that I'm capable of doing this with just a simple hardware that's available right off the shelf. Uh, well, to round off, uh, thanks to Forge Dem for uh, giving me uh, this platform to speak. Uh, I also want to do a very quick shout out uh, to my parents who are currently watching live. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. And with that, thank you very much. What is the total cost of the project? Like, how much did you spend on the old hardware? Um, let's see, the few, uh, the, so the question is uh, how much the hardware is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In general. Uh, the few fine is about 100 euros, and then the Raspberry Pi is around 20, 30 euros or so. And do, do you have to use it like Google board, like for speech recognition? Pardon? Uh, there is a Google board for Raspberry Pi, which you can use for speech recognition. Ooh. And you can integrate <laughs> it like and just make Google Glass like from, from scratch. Uh, what's it called? Uh, or something like that. I'm going to look it up. Thanks. Do you think uh, to use uh, some kind of uh, 3D printed uh, casing? Because the project is cool, but it looks a little bit kind of a mess. <laughs> it does. So no, I completely agree. <laughs> so did you try it? Because uh, you can sell, like, you can order uh, a custom-made. Yeah, so the question is, is whether uh, I'm, uh, I've actually uh, tried out something, anything with a 3D printed case. Uh, all I can say at the moment, it's been in the back of my mind. Uh, I, I have some friends who have uh, printers, and I do want to sit with them at some point and see if we can actually create something better looking than this. But yeah, then you also need to have the battery and everything implemented. So I think that's going to be the challenge there. Uh, just a quick remark. If Trevor also is watching, uh, there are people from across the world who are interested in the project and who do have 3D printing skill and design to indeed combine the case and everything. So. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, just a quick one. When do you think the hardware is going to be able to catch up with the um, software? So the question is... Well, well, uh, when will the hardware reduce in size enough that it will just be in someone's glasses They will be available at an optician's? Uh, so the question is when the hardware will be available uh, for, 
for the glass itself. And yeah, and then I'm just I'm afraid that I'm just not much of a hardware person, and I, I'm really not following that enough at the moment to give a proper answer. Uh, I know that there is, at the very least, there are glasses out there called the Vuzix Blade, which is, looks remarkably like normal glasses, and projects them uh, uh, and projects the text actually on the glasses itself. Uh, but those are also like really expensive at the moment. So, quick remark: when the next person thinks of the question uh, for this, you have, for example, the um, uh, face by North, uh, and it's about six hundred dollars more or less and they look roughly like your glasses the branch are a bit thicker but not so much uh, they do have a small display i think the interaction is very limited but this you can buy not at a normal optician they have like two shops in the u.s one in toronto or in north america one in toronto one in brooklyn uh, but they are going to ship a version two anywhere in the world uh, will they be on Ruben's platform is still to be discussed, <laughs> but uh, and this is the kind of harder. Basically, the geekiest you look, the more powerful uh, in terms of features. But then, the more normal they look, the less uh, features like uh, depth sensing or anything you can get. Yes. Ah, uh, since you're still thinking, I just saw that which is as clownish as it gets, which is the better <laughs> appeal that I nearly stepped on you to keep the mic. So please, when you leave the room, I see like uh, coffee, uh, cans and everything, please do pick it up. It's a volunteer-based event. If you don't pick it up, then we don't actually come to the ULB next time because we're not welcome anymore. So please do pick up whatever. It doesn't have to be yours. This is not my banana. And I'm going to, I don't know, throw it somewhere. So next, yeah, thank you. Hey. Have you experienced with um, using a small camera as a eye tracker for uh, interface instead of buttons or, or voice? Um, not in particular, yeah. I'm not, are there any cheap variants? Uh, well, I, I don't have anything uh, in specific in mind, but, but as you have attached a small uh, outward facing camera, perhaps there could be an even smaller one facing your own iris and perhaps do that some kind of tracking uh, for. Uh, look up to the right for OK and left <laughs> and something that like that. I like the idea uh, of uh, basically using an eye tracker uh, to control the user interface, but already the endoscope that I'm using at the moment, I, I already bought it off a very sketchy website and uh, the, it, it has a very low quality, so I don't think it would even be able to uh, recognize it. But I do really like the idea, something to keep in mind. So we have time for a couple more questions. With an idea, suggest, yeah, comments. So yeah, just a comment that uh, you could also use muscle, muscular features in your face to do some control. That sounds really interesting. Uh. There is a project also uh, at MIT at the Media Lab on uh, using, uh, I think, the, I don't know what those muscles are called, but you, you have just to whisper, you don't actually say anything, and, and in terms of uh, richness of interaction, it is quite good. Uh, in terms of input, it works really well, and I think it's open source, so I'm not sure. Couple more still. Ideas, suggestions, questions, doubts. No doubts. Well, feedback is. Uh, I don't mind feedback. Yeah. Um, we have have we thought of using computer vision for uh, recognizing hand gestures using the small camera that's already built into the device. Pardon? Using uh, hand gestures uh, as a form of control, uh, you have the camera already on your device, yeah. so we can uh, try to do something with uh, OpenCV to um, recognize the recognize certain hand gestures uh, and uh, using those hand gestures to control the device. Right. So the idea is essentially so that I, that with the camera that I can put in here, it's able to track my hand here, and then I could like swipe back and forth. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. That's actually also a really cool idea. I'm, I'm really glad <laughs> that you guys are giving me the uh, ideas. So thanks for that. Uh. Yeah. If you've got Bluetooth. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you've got Bluetooth on the Raspberry Pi, you could use a, a, a wireless mouse to 
moot a point for having on the screen the keyboard on the uh, on on the um, web interface. Uh, the, um, so yeah, using the Bluetooth API uh, as a as a tracker, uh, that's also one of the things that I've been playing around with. Uh, mostly just using the gamepad API. Uh, but uh, the biggest issue where I ran across there is essentially that I would then have to create a whole interface here. And when I started out with the project, that was just a little bit too much work. Like I would have to create a virtual keyboard and everything. But it is one of the things that I am interested in trying out uh, in the future. Um, if you can point a camera into your eye, you can also use uh, uh, pupil movement uh, tracker, eye movement tracker. And I think that's one of the ideas that, were what that was suggested earlier, yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, that's also cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. That's your first day. Um. <laughs>